be the flame, not the moth. One who makes no mistakes makes nothing. If you have not done things worthy of being written about, at least write things worthy of being read. The sweetest pleasures are those which are hardest to be won. Beauty without wit offers nothing but the enjoyment of its material charms, whilst witty ugliness captivates by the charms of the mind, and at last fulfills all the desires of a man it has captivated. As for myself, I always willingly acknowledge my own self as the principal cause of every good and every evil which may befall me. Therefore, I have always found myself capable of being my own pupil and ready to give love to my teacher. I have always loved truth so passionately that I have often resorted to lying as a way of introducing it into the minds which were ignorant of its charms. I have loved women even to madness, but I have always loved liberty better. We ourselves are the authors of almost all our woes and griefs, of which we so unreasonably complain. I am writing my life to laugh at myself, and I am succeeding. There is no such thing as destiny. We ourselves shape our lives. Give me a man who is man enough to give himself just to the woman who is worth him. If that woman were me, I would love him alone and forever. Let anyone ask a beautiful woman without wit whether she would be willing to exchange a small portion of her beauty for a sufficient dose of wit. If she speaks the truth, she will say, No, I am satisfied to be as I am. But why is she satisfied? Because she is not aware of her own deficiency. Let an ugly but witty woman be asked if she would change her wit against beauty, and she will not hesitate in saying no. Why? Because, knowing the value of her wit, she is well aware that it is sufficient by itself to make her a queen in any society. Enjoy the present. Bid defiance to the future. Laugh at all those reasonable beings who exercise their reason to avoid the misfortunes which they fear. Destroying at the same time the pleasure they might enjoy.
the same principle that forbids me to lie does not allow me to tell the truth. Desires are but pain and torment, and enjoyment is sweet because it delivers us from them. When a man is in love, very little is enough to throw him into despair, and as little to enhance his joy to the utmost. Cultivating whatever gave pleasure to my senses was always the chief business of my life. I have never found any occupation more important. Feeling that I was born for the sex opposite mine, I've always loved it and done all that I could to make myself loved by it. I have also been extravagantly fond of good food and irresistibly drawn by anything which could excite curiosity. Man is a free agent, but he is not free if he does not believe it, for the more power he attributes to destiny, the more he deprives himself of the power which God granted him when he gave him reason. The man who seeks to educate himself must first read and then travel in order to correct what he has learned. Love is a great poet its resources are inexhaustible. But if the end it has in view is not obtained, it feels weary and remains silent. I have often had no scruples about deceiving nitwits and scoundrels and fools when I found it necessary. We avenge intelligence when we deceive a fool, and deceiving a fool is an exploit worthy of an intelligent man. What has infused my very blood with an unconquerable hatred of the whole tribe of fools from the day of my birth is that I become a fool myself when I am in their company. Cheating is a sin, but honest cunning is simple prudence. It is a virtue, to be sure. It has a likeness to roguery, but that cannot be helped. He who has not learned to practice it is a fool. The thing is to dazzle. The story she had told me was possible, but it was not believable. Here it is. You assume that I am rich. I am not. I shall have nothing once I have emptied my purse. You perhaps suppose that I am a man of high birth, and I am of a rank either lower than your own or equal to it. I have no talent which can earn money, no employment, no reason to be sure that I shall have anything to eat a few months hence. I have neither relatives nor friends 
nor rightful claims, nor any settled plan. In short, all that I have is youth, health, courage, a modicum of intelligence, a sense of honor and decency, with a little reading and the bare beginnings of a career in literature. My great treasure is that I am my own master. I am not dependent upon anyone, and that I am not afraid of misfortunes. My nature tends towards extravagance, such is the man I am. We love without heeding reason and cease to love in the same manner. From that moment, our love became sad and sadness is a disease which gives the death blow to affection. Love is only a feeling of curiosity more or less intense, grafted upon the inclination placed in us by nature that the species may be preserved. There is no such thing as a perfectly happy or perfectly unhappy man in the world. One has more happiness in his life and another more unhappiness, and the same circumstance may produce widely different effects on individuals of different temperaments. I cannot think without a shudder of contracting any obligation towards death. I hate death for happy or miserable Life is the only blessing which man possesses. And those who do not love it are not worthy of it. The philosopher is a person who refuses no pleasures which do not produce greater sorrows and who knows how to create new ones. It is shallow desires which make a young man bold. Strong desires confound him. I found the writer who says, when the lamp is taken away, all women are alike. Says true, but without love, this great business is a vile thing. Hope is nothing but a deceitful flatterer, accepted by reason only because it is often in need of palliatives. Finishing first is nothing to brag about. The source of love, as I learned later, is a curiosity which combined with the inclination which nature is obliged to give us in order to preserve itself. Hence, women make no mistake in taking such pains over their person and their clothing, for it is only by these that they can amuse a curiosity to read them in those whom nature at their birth declared worthy of something better than blindness. As time goes on, a man who has loved many women, all of them beautiful, 
reaches the point of feeling curious about ugly women if they are new to him. He sees a painted woman. The pain is obvious to him, but it does not put him off. His passion, which has become a vice, is ready with a fraudulent title page. It is quite possible, he tells himself, that the book is not as bad as all that. Indeed, it may have no need of this absurd artifice. He decides to scan it. He tries to turn over the pages, but no. The living book objects. It insists on being read properly. And the egomaniac becomes a victim of coitery. The monstrous prosecutor of all men who ply the trade of love. You, sir, are a man of intelligence and have read these last 20 lines which Apollo drew from my pen. Permit me to tell you that if they fail to disillusion you, you are lost. That is, you will be the victim of the fair sex to the last moment of your life. If that prospect pleases you, I congratulate you. Happiness is gained by complying with the duties of whatever condition of life one is in. And you must constrain yourself to rise to that exalted station in which destiny has placed you. Marriage is the tomb of love. A beautiful woman without a mind of her own leaves her lover with no resource after he has physically enjoyed her charms. I have not written my memoirs for those young people who can only save themselves from falling by spending their youth in ignorance, but for those whom experience of life has rendered proof against being seduced, whom living in the fire has transformed into salamanders. If pleasure does exist, and if life is necessary to enjoy pleasure, then life is happiness. There are misfortunes, as I know by experience, but the very existence of such misfortunes proves that the sum total of happiness is greater. Because a few thorns are to be found in a basket full of roses, is the existence of those beautiful flowers to be denied? No. It is a slander to deny that life is happiness. Happy are those who know how to obtain pleasures without injury to anyone. Insane are those who fancy that the Almighty can enjoy the sufferings, the pains, the fasts, and the abstinences which they offer to Him as a sacrifice. and that his love is granted only to those who tax themselves so foolishly. When a man gets it into his head to do something, and when he exclusively occupies himself in that design, he must succeed, whatever the difficulties. that man will become whatever he dreams.